Hello, welcome back to Matchball Grid. My name is Andre. And my name is Jeff. And thanks so much for tuning in. This is round six, Canadian Nationals 2023, single-sided Swiss. This is again, table seven, and we have two great players here, both showing up from Ontario, trying to take away this uh, this Quebecois trophy, potentially. Uh, Jeff, firstly, thanks so much for joining me. How you, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm excited. We have a couple of guests to join over the next couple rounds between Swiss and Top Cuts. And uh, we're in for a really interesting game here. This is actually on the left. Uh, this is Rob. Rob is playing a lat deck. This might be my favorite deck from the entire tournament, from what I've seen, at least on camera. Uh, you're going to see what this is, but looks like an Arasana list that's kind of been transplanted into a bit of that, you know, uh, sit back planning sort of shaper uh, draw engine with uh, you're going to see some interesting clues. I think Lily Bad being the console is a bit of a, you know, it's a interesting take yeah this is a pretty unusual one i know i saw some people trying it at cascadia and uh we're not the biggest fans but we've rob has probably had some <laughs> more time to evolve on the idea so hopefully we'll see i'll be to see what uh, he's done to evolve past that and on the right, Terrence is playing an op list. I'm not fully sure what this list is just yet. I think there's a big chance this is very similar. Mind you, if you're not familiar with Jeff, uh, Jeff, you came in second. You were the finalist at the America Continentals just, it's like what, now a month and a half ago in, in uh, Washington? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people played my list and it was also pretty popular at EMEA. And I think a lot of people have improved on it in lots of ways. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, how Terrence plays it. And it's also been interesting to see how player runner players adapt to it now that it's a known list. Uh, that's been one of the big things to for me to watch it as it kind of yeah. evolves. It's like a deck that you pretty commonly run to in Jinteki.net, so a lot of people got more reps into it. Again, this is Op, Super Heavy Logistics. I think both of us can talk for a long time about how cool Op is. Can you like do a really top-level description of what you expect this deck to be doing? Yeah, so if this list is my list, which, you know, it seems to be think this list is trying to rush agendas pretty aggressively in the early game. Uh, it has a lot of like basically every piece of ice in the deck list is meant to do put on early pressure and allow the corporation to score either an Atlas with an advancement counter or a Oaktown renovation really early in the game before the runner can really set up and then sets up one of two different end game states where it makes a very frustrating to get into remote or just fast advancing to win. And it's got lots of tricks to go and do this. And this is a pretty stand, like this is a, uh, you know, kind of in that theme aggressive start of I'm gonna ice r and I'm gonna ice my remote, I'm gonna play hedge fund. And so turn two, I would be ready to start trying to score. Now, I love this very cleanly cards on the table because again, on the left, that is lat. You want to balance your hand size with the opponent's hand size. So getting three cards in hand, I think lat can probably dump a bit of a hand. We're getting our first single axis here on HQ. Again, you're expecting an agenda somewhere, but an audacity, at least you get three credits to find out that that's in hand. Uh, I don't know, Lad is kind of, you know, maligned in some ways, feels like a bit of a boring identity, but the more I play it, the more I find that mini game to be like, okay, I know what my end goal is going to be at the end of my turn. How do I get there while still being efficient? And I kind of appreciate it the more I play Lat. Yeah, it's definitely one of the, the fun parts about Lat is that you do get to play that efficiency game. Uh, I think the downside can be sometimes you just play that whole game plan as an efficiency game and don't kind of deviate for what good runner play will look like. And you can feel a little bit trapped trying to get value out of your ID and not out of just playing the game correctly. I yeah. guess. That's always a risk, and there you see an early DZMZ. It's good to get that down soon. The simul chip on turn one doesn't really help. To me, that feels like, you know, you're stretching a bit for that lat efficiency. Like, can you click for a draw? Can you get this down? But we'll see how that card interacts with. Again, fast advance is a big part of this deck. We're assuming the Shaper here has access to Clot, so being able to threaten that if that gets into the bin on the table with the self-modifying code, that will be relevant, probably not for three or four turns, but we'll see how the setup goes. Single ice and a remote server, you can face check into the ice into AWP pretty aggressively, especially without programs, right? Yeah, this is one of the things that I've started seeing people do very well against this deck is just say, there's nothing that you're going to do that's going to hurt me. Um, and so we're seeing in single install on the remote, a second ice on R&D. That's actually, that's, that's a very, to me, that says that the upgrade is, or like to me, that makes the remote read more like an upgrade than an agenda. Just because yeah. that's saying, you know, if I cared about scoring, two ice is basically guaranteed from this board state to keep the runner out. Um, and so this is saying, oh, I don't care quite as much about keeping the runner out. It's more important for me to kind of make sure that you don't have a long-term game plan here. 
Yo, there's my first, one of my favorite cards in the entire game, Prognostic Q-Loop. At the beginning, here at the run, you can look at the top two cards of your deck. Technically miss the trigger here, but you can install a card uh, clicklessly for credit off the top of your deck, as long as it is a hardware program. Now that's a Mavirus. I think here we're realizing we're missing the Prognostic Q-Loop trigger. That Mavirus is going to get trashed. And that is a card that is just very prevalent right now in the meta. It's having a big squeeze on a lot of the viruses you're expecting. But of course, an op, three cost, instant speed for two cost. There's so many good lines in the deck. Yeah, it was a big part of actually what kind of drove me to making the deck in the first place was the, I want a solution to Anarch that is sitting around with Fermenters and Amakuas and running me over. And if I can find a deck that can justifiably run three Maviruses, like that felt like a way that I could tech against the most prominent matchup as well as kind of um, making, like doing yeah. uh, damage to the to the runner. So, and... and Tukana ends up being a huge part of this list, uh, but here we see a it's, it was in fact an agenda in the remote. Uh, yeah. So Terrence Terrence outplayed me here, uh, going for install install or advance advance audacity, getting the early Atlas counter. An Atlas counter is a huge pivot point for this deck. It's a huge source of power. Being able to search for any card at instant speed is fantastic. I was going to say before, you know, that prognostic came down, a card on the remote server that doesn't have an advancement on it. You're not worried about many agendas in the deck and that audacity opens that lineup. Let around, let alone makes it a bit of a laugh when you're looking at lat trying to match zero hand size. It's <laughs> it's going to be maybe a bit ugly if you draw a bit, you know, awkward here. But at least lat is now kind of a blank ID for maybe the next couple of turns, especially if the diesel goes off. Yeah. And I think one of the one of the things that Terrence I'm assuming is done by going for this play is done with the improvements that I kind of recommended in my write-up, which is going to two audacities. With a single audacity, it could be a little bit tough, especially because we saw a spin doctor out of the corner of Terrence's hand. Uh, but I think it's uh, with multiple audacities, you end up in a pretty good spot here. Now, Mystic Bones coming down, that is 10 credits on a card, two to install 12 for trashables. Now, there's nothing on the table that clearly interacts with here. So we're hoping maybe in the near future we're trashing. I don't think you expect too many expensive trashes in the deck, but there's a fair few upgrades and, and uh, assets, but Creative Commission ending your turn on 11 credits. So I think the big question here is what is the Shaper going to do? Obviously, the remote server is still going to be important. A fast advance, we're not threatening Clot as much as I don't think Terrence can do much with a single card in hand. Uh, but remote server charge here, I think you're going to need an SMC. You're going to need a, a program's probably going to come down this turn. Install, draw, credit, yes. one card in HQ. Yeah, Bones is a little bit less useful in this matchup because your installables that you're going to be trashing are stuff like Dukana, a virus, and Managarm, I think is the most expensive it gets. I guess yeah. Vovo, if, if Terrence is on that. And so it's like you could maybe get all of the value off of Miss Bones, but it's it would not be a high priority install for me typically if uh, if I was playing uh, a yeah. Rob's list here. So now one card in the remote server. I think best case scenario, you're hoping he gets a Rashida, maybe a Spin Doctor, but you need something that pushes you onto the table because you've just spent a lot of clicks installing. SMC coming down, Canad's version. Mind you, the nice colorful one sleeved up. Love to see that on the table. So now with just the SMC and the simul chip, you have access to two breakers. If you have one overclock, you can get there pretty cheaply. And it looks like it's overclocked just in the remote server. We're gonna call uh, the, the install here. I think you're assuming most of the time it's gonna be a barrier as the ice on the remote server. Prognostic yeah, it's, there. yeah it's, it's the most common thing for sure is to usually put like a border control or a sandstone um an envelopment is also pretty reasonable pretty common um there you go it, there's a sandstone yeah. gonna come in at five strength of their single virus counter here and i love the overclock so uh easy to use with either prognostic q loop smc we didn't mention mind you the dzmz prognostic q loop combination so if you fire it on the corpse turn that counts as the once per turn clause as long as you're hitting a program but looks now after seeing the top of the deck if we found our program there we could just rip it off the top but we're gonna go search pay two credits of the smc and go a bit deeper what fract are we assuming here i think gauss is probably the most common in these sort of uh lists yeah, Gauss has proven to be pretty good, assuming that there's not actually that much sand. Like, Sandstone is one of those ice that you're kind of annoyed about uh, seeing, because yeah. the call with Gauss most of the time is that basically every barrier that's being played right now is base strength one, and so Gauss gets through it no problem. Uh, at strength, you know, five, you you only have to boost Gauss once uh, when it comes in installed, because it's coming in at strength, oh shoot, I want to say three off the top of my head. I think it's four. Yeah. It is four. Okay, they did. Yeah. Oh, yes, it does get plus three. So you you still have to boost it once, which is actually quite frustrating because it costs you two credits to do so. Uh, 
but it's still pretty good. And then looks that's like a hostel. And Terrence hostel. probably drew that on like click one after the mandatory. So you don't want to hold that in hand, just push into the remote server. So now we have sussed out what the ice in the remote server is. You're pretty excited to get that hostel. It takes you to three points and then you're two fast advance away. I think Terrence did catch you, mind you. That's very important to understand. The SMC ate the DZMZ optimizer trigger, so you can't use that to cheapen the Gauss install, at least that turn. And we'll see if we can get yes. down to one card in hand. I think he does have it. It was just a simul ship install. And I think Lat triggers here with the one card. Love to see it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's a really nice play for the Corp. I'm always a little tempted if I draw an agenda, click one in that sort of situation to keep drawing. It does yeah. mean that sometimes you're going to draw into a second agenda and be pretty sad. Um, but, you know, it's uh, you need to draw those cards at some point anyway. And sort of just making the runner actually go and run HQ when they maybe do want to set up and generate more value is a better play for you. But we see Terrence not slowing down at all. This is what the op kind of does is just say, I'm going to keep installing cards in the remote. Playing the playing with the whole game with HQ unguarded is honestly your ideal state. Uh, and yeah. Terrence is executing on that game plan really, really well. And it's, you know, it's a weird ta deck because it doesn't really tax, but it goes so fast that runners end up taxed in a lot of situations. So we're going to see what best case what's in the remote server. If you just scored an atlas with no counters on it, I think you're okay. I don't know if you have the board state here. With only four credits, you can't res much else on the remote server. But hey, expensive install there. That's Lilypad, the new console from the Tomina Initiative that comes in with two MU and it gives you a card draw. I was just going to say, like, if you really want to challenge the sandstone here, you could consider, let's say, flickering the gauss. Uh, trash it, reinstall with the simul chip, draw a card. It only costs you one credit. It only saves you two, but it gets you a card draw. But we'll see if we can charge the remote server. It's just... You don't have anything on the table getting you money. But Peach is Sean. Peach is a really like, spicy card. Yeah, getting so Peach Sean is seeing a ton of play in Arasana at the moment. Um, not even in build like I'm gonna say like I had an Arasana build that was pretty successful at Continentals, but we then saw it at, you know, a lot of people experimenting with different types of builds. And Peach of Sean is like the centerpiece card for a lot of these. And the the click gain is just a very powerful effect. Um, yeah, and I really like this. Like, it's such an aggressive card here. Installing it for free, drawing a card, and now saying, Terrence, I know you don't have a lot of money. If you don't res here, this is basically a clickless run unless you can res one of these pieces of ice. And it looks like it's no res. So that is, again, as long as you pass that ice, you're getting your click back. He's still considering it. And if he reses here, again, the remote server has to be Rashida for this to be a really great turn. It looks like it is going to fire off here. Do you think this gives you a read on what's the multi-axis in the deck? Ooh, Drafter, though. Oh, that's a spicy include. I I like that. This is probably being played over a Vovo Zeti, just based on my guess on the list. Uh, yeah. Getting to fire this is really nice. Uh, so there's some virus. Oh, probably the, you know what, Rob's probably asking what's face up in the bin, deciding if he wants to kind of commit some resources to preventing this from firing. Because we have the simul chip and SMC available, but looks like it's being resolved. So we're going to add a hedge fund back to hand. Uh, and then yeah, maybe this helps you trick or lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, off the top, Atlas. Hey, that's rip it, off a single. Yeah. I mean, you don't usually want to run through a drafter for free, but taking it for two points, it's probably worth it for you as the runner. Not against every corp, to be honest. I think against Asa, yeah. as Asa, I'm pretty happy to trade a tr uh, two points for an extra fully operational, but... Uh, but here you're you're pretty happy as the runner. So I think like the speech of Sean might show you that in the mid to late game, Rob's big win condition is either conduit. We go for those big deep, uh, deep dives. Ooh, prepaid voice bed, mind you. Another pretty, uh, I would say mid to late game oriented value piece. It's not too slow to see it. And we're going to expect some amount of events, but I wonder we're going to see twinning. Uh, but I think the other big thing with Peach Sean, you're not seeing it that often in some of the Arsana lists is how aggressively you can just deep dive on many ridiculous board states. Yeah, and to me, the, the prepaid voice pad also reads into uh, I'm going for some kind of deep dive based game plan. Yeah, that's a good point. Rashid and Remote Server, I think that's going to keep Terrence afloat here. Again, he was only down on one credit. Uh, the deck, yeah. the op decks can have a bit of more explosive economy than you think they might. Things like Extract really put you back into the game, but we know he's holding that hedge fund and five credits was pretty far away from that one he starts his turn on. Yeah, I started doing a lot more plays, and this was probably a sign that the deck needs a little bit more econ. Starting spending to start to start using my Atlas counters just to go and grab extracts and firing them off in the middle of the game, um, Whoa. because that was just a. I was like, this is actually a higher value to me than like trying to s sneak an audacity through, because like just being strong in the early, being rushy and fast was more important. 
Uh, but I think very reasonably, Terran's going for take a credit, and install a card on the remote, and uh, play the hedge fund. Just very solid plan for you here. And just once again, presenting the threat. And honestly, the you're not too worried about runs on R&D for quite a while here. Uh, Drafter's just an annoying piece of ice for just about everyone to break. So it's a really nice include uh, as an op card here. Yeah, I was going to say, Echelon does not break it very easily in the early game. You're spending four credits just like Carbon. Now, we only have two installed icebreakers that might change. Again, two credits, install your breaker, draw a card, it's nice. Let's see again, a big thing Rob here is he has so much economy or so much of an engine setup. He has all these like once per turn triggers. He wants to play an event once a turn. He wants to draw or sorry, run once a turn with prognostic. He wants to match hand size once a turn. He wants to install a program. This is why I love this deck. It gives you so many different goals to do. Kind of like a Hoshiko deck as much as it is a bit more uh, install heavy than arguably run heavy. Yeah. All right. We're going to install triple advance, score a second atlas. So all three atlases are gone. Um, but we have a counter here for, for Terrence. And really, you're often thinking about this as I only need one more agenda score to win the game. Because if you draw a hostile install advance uh, and the Shaper player doesn't immediately go and get the clot, now suddenly you're on five and you're quite happy. And if you can get to six, yeah. you're still pretty happy as well. And like Sandstone and a border control is honestly going to be good, especially with the runner being on only five credits. There's still, this is still a part of the game where I would really think about trying to just like, if I top deck an Oaktown Renovation, just installing yeah. and advancing it face up and saying, come and get it. Um, it's part of the idea. So Rob's still working through his deck again. Something was installed on the table through the drafter. I think my guess would probably be a Spin Doctor. I think we saw one in hand. Now, there was two face down cards. If one of those is, was an extra face down of virus, there's some, you know, situation where you want to run it and trash it if you're relying on Claude in the next couple of turns, because the deck generally runs more than one virus. So if you're worried about Claude Lock and that's the way that you're going to push to the mid game, it's something you have to deal with. Run HQ here, Prognostic, look at two. There's four in hand. Just seeing an ice wall. ice wall. Yeah, so this One is cost a, barrier. Yeah, this is a cost. I, I, this is a card that I wasn't. I'm not super high on, but I know a lot of people have been playing it. Um, it does make me actually wonder if Terence is playing something a little bit closer to the NWE version of Op that was on calibration testings. They were oh, very right, high yeah. on um, ice wall as just an extremely cheap way to uh, like gear check people, um, and. Uh, and kind of just keep your forward tempo going that way. Yeah. The other nice and, and thing the is game. like, yeah, and then you can always extract it for Rashidas and Spin exactly. Doctors, which are, are really powerful tools for you. Um, Yo, that click impression, I love that so much. So environmental testing came down, a card that, again, you more often see in our Asana, and then for credit, we reveal the top of the deck, we install that fermenter, so it's cooking, you get the card draw off the lily pad, you get the counter and the testing, you install for free with DZ. This is really, really quite cool to me. And we're off overclocking straight to R&D, so we're probably going to find another breaker here. It saves you some money on the drafter if you can just find anything uh, from your deck. Again, simul chip. You need to trash something if you want to get to your SMC, so I'm not actually sure. I guess we're just using the yeah. overclock money to break the drafter. Yeah, I mean, so you can boost for, you can spend, like, drafter is, uh, if you use Echelon to boost and break, it's all five credits off of the overclock. So you're challenging mm -hmm. Terrans to say, you know, can you make this, is this ice on R&D something I need to actually worry about, or do I get a free single here? Um, this is click. This is? This looks like a click three run, which is tricky for, for Terrence for sure. Yeah. Or maybe this is a click four run, which is if also- If he passes it, I think bit. he gets it back, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's an a cool res. barrier. That's a very interesting res. So I think, yeah, you just go and put Rashida in the remote. Um, now Rob's yeah. going to get through that, get his click back, but he can't get an access on R&D. But yeah, that is a pretty fair trade for the corporation. He might check out because he would go to zero for a single here. Um, that's true yeah I think here you're like really dependent on the fermenter to like recover I think we've seen two creative commissions so it okay. might be hard to recover but we're going again for this to go to zero for the R&D stop cut at the top yeah stop cut this is like one of the cards that I think had the biggest glow up uh, cross rotations because now oh, every yeah. faction has to protect their breakers in some fashion rather than getting them back for free uh, and so Stavka is everywhere, and I think probably like one of the big power cards in Op. Uh, and 
Like, it's really good for the runner to know when they're around, but now every ice install is going to look like a Stavka until the Stavka gets found. Uh, What's the, uh, the half run is three cost or two cost? It's three, right? Half run is two cost because you can okay. pur you can purge with Mavirus at instant speed to go and fetch it. Um, right. So we actually have I, a three cost on the yeah. table. As much as you don't want to get rid of that drafter, you have that Stavka half run interaction. Again, with only one credit, I don't think you have to go that far to get the value, but that's really yeah. important to keep in mind. So there's also the sand, big credit yeah. swing. There's also the sandstone, so yeah, the sandstone on the table, stone. which is the yeah. probably going to be the, the actual target in a lot of cases. Um, yeah, I mean, Stavka Thanks. is just really nice because it's it's expensive for everyone to break right now uh, when you boost it. I've honestly felt like I've, I don't think I've ever actually used the half run. I've just used the threat of the half run to do stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully people know. You get some people who don't know the interaction and it feels a bit worse. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah just knowing it's there does change the play patterns yeah. for sure. I would, now, you know, if I'm Terrence here, I was desperate. I'm desperately hoping that Rashida found me an agenda that I can install. Yeah. Um, you have a good but window to jam like it, here. Looks like it did not. Um, unless we're going to install one of the three twos in the deck that uh, the above the law or the odd deck. Huh. I think of HQ. Yeah. Interesting. This might be some deep, uh, deep dive respect to force out another breaker. Again, if you do ice up centrals uh, just one central that sometimes can make it a bit difficult but yeah i think if he had a, an agenda probably go on the remote server we haven't seen a single border control and i think here rob is lucky enough he has the dirty laundry i think he had that in hand already that's the only way i think he can recover here without having to pop the fermenter you can't create the fermenter too hard in this match because again the prevalence of a virus right we can't dirty laundry archives yeah. that'll be a problem unless you take that off so it's hard here for the for uh for rob to get all the value off his you know his massive engine of things that want him to do a, a certain <laughs> thing every turn yeah i mean i think you might just pop, like if it's me i might even pop the fermenter here yes it's only a click for four credits but basically the install cost of that fermenter it installed for free and it drew a replacement card off of the lily yeah. pad and actually, I think he, you're right. He uh, he Q looped it, so it wasn't even a click. So it's like not. I don't need not to bad. get the most value out of this. Um, or are they? I'm wondering if. Okay, yeah. I was no, actually sure checking if he got it too. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's like you can't actually dirty. You can't dirty laundry any server here. I think as as uh, Rob. So like yeah. that's why I'm like, oh, if you just clear the fermenter, dirty laundry archives, like you don't mind too much. We see he does have a conduit in hand. Again, three ice on our remote server. It's going to be pretty expensive. You do eventually get the drafter for only two credits if you can get something down. I don't know if we're going to see Cubon in this list. Uh, it is, you know, another nice thing to get a card draw to filter through your deck, but I feel like that's probably more Arasana's camp. So we need more money on the table. Again, environmental testing too. I think you just want some cheap installs here. You can technically install another prognostic Q loop, but then you're actually spending credits and a click to get money in the future. It's not a great trade. So yeah, I think really need to crack the fermenter here unless you're going to click for credits and discard some cards it's hard yeah, to play i can't quite hand. tell if those are like duplicate hardware is off on the far left they are or not. i think they're all okay. lily pads oh yeah so like two lily pads in the conduit and you can't really put the conduit down here yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely a little bit of a tricky spot and it's it's hard to say oh the right line for for is to click for uh click the fermenter and dirty laundry but i think to me that seems like the line you probably want to go for if you're worried about getting scored out. And that said, because Terrence hasn't drawn agendas, you know, it's not the end of the world here to just play it slow and say, I'm going to get some late game juice. Um, yeah, I love his interaction. Terrence checking his timing structure, but basically <laughs> is able to res the spin doctor before the discard phase. So that means he's going to start his turn on six cards, seven cards on hand and denies the lat draw. This is a, a counterplay you kind of often see against lat if the, the corp knows this, uh, this timing structure here. Yeah. So drawn up again, yeah. open something with the remote server. I think we see a Rashida in hand. You would love a piece of ice here. I think you know the fermenter is going to get cracked. I'm not sure if you can afford to purge here. You definitely wouldn't mind the virusing for whatever two cost in the deck it gives you good value. Yeah. So we see just a little discard change. Uh, it looks like, okay. I'm actually glad to see a card other than Rashida go on the remote. This probably means the op is looking to score, especially with a second yeah. ice on the remote. Seven credits is not a ton, but border control will get you a long way. An upgrade in the remote. That's threatening to be a manic arm or a virus, which becomes a manic arm. So it's it's a lot of tax for the runner here to sort out uh, how they want to handle this remote, even if it's not actually that like it's these remotes often look scarier than they truly are. But here we see the crack for six. You know, Rob kind of gets paid out on saying, hey, the corp didn't have anything, wasn't requiring me to be aggressive last turn. 
so I can get the two extra credits. I can now Dirty Laundry Archives and then go for like a click two run on the remote and be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, this is huge too. The fermenter being trash means we can pull in that turbine we just discarded. It actually is entirely free and draws you a card. And I think that's really interesting. Maybe a turn ago, right? If you crack the fermenter already, you could simul chip for an SMC, get that SMC ready for uh, Terrence's turn so you can get something from your deck, get the DZ to fire, get the lily pad to fire, and then be set up for another simul chip. Like you have a lot of really cool options there on your timing structure. That one turn that he did take off, mostly clicking for credits, we'll see if that's a uh, too big of a tempo loss. And I think we now have the deep dive in hand. So while you can maybe contest the remote server, get some of that ice res to begin swing centrals that uh, were on three points. And with a Pizza Sean, you could win on a single deep dive. Yeah, I mean, that the, the call to say, hey, I'm going to discard the turbine to go and get it in next turn is like a really heads up play. Just yeah. saying, oh, yeah, the fermenter is going to turn on my simul chip so I don't even have to throw away programs. Uh, you know, three clicks left. The turn, You're actually quite happy with how this is. You know, I think... Poking, poking the remote, I don't really hate here because you still have access to the simul chip to get the SMC to get the last breaker out. And you'll be tearing through most op remotes pretty quickly. You've got enough credits and you'll get a lot of environmental testing. You know, you could even install the simul chip. Actually, no, you're just, if you just run the remote, you will pop uh, and get your decoder out. You will get the environmental testing payout. So the remote's yeah. actually pretty soft here. Uh, short of like a specific combination of cards from op. Yeah, it might be the stop go respect here, right? Because an ice win on their remote server, that's going to be a difficult thing to deal with potentially. But yeah, you're totally right. I, I love that. When you have like a four cost program, like a conduit or a turbine, discarding it, understanding you can install it later for free, let alone draw a card sometimes, uh, feels amazing. SMC draw as well. Again, another cheaper way to get closer to environmental testing to give you some control on the corpse turn. But we'll see if he challenges here. I do think that Stavka might put a bit of a, you know, fear uh, behind his run. Yeah, I think it's, you know, when to play with fear. And honestly, with the deep dive, Pisha Sean, I th it's not unreasonable to just say, "Hey, I'm going to try and I'm going to try and win on that in a future turn. I'm going mm -hmm. to hit two agendas. There's no world in which I don't hit two agendas out of R and D, um, just because of how dense R and D ends up in a lot of these op lists. Though actually, I don't yeah. think op has even triggered this game. Um, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't. It's weird. There's certain matches where like you realize, oh, that was op. Yeah, it didn't trigger. Um, but it depends what ice we see. Mostly, we haven't seen a single extract. We haven't seen like a virus, but. Here Dirty Laundry HQ. I love it. The Cascade of Triggers. I think we saw at the top of the deck there is a hush. You can always fire that on the opponent's turn just to hush, I don't know, the unresed ice, play around border control. Envelopment gets really goofy when you hush it as well. So we'll see if he uses that on this run or the next as much as DZ has already been used and Lilypad. Uh, just checking, I think, MU. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're good. It's sometimes yeah. hard to keep track of that with Trojans, but uh, that's very important uh, that you keep on I top of that. I narrowly dodged a game loss because my opponent very graciously told me that it was okay that I was over MU for their entire turn. Uh, they agreed that they, yeah. <laughs> they said it didn't change their game plan. I was very thankful for that. Uh, Keith, shout outs uh, to future opponents. You do not owe me that. You can take the win. Uh, it would be deserved. Uh, <laughs> Call <but> a judge. <laughs> <laughs> there uh, we go smc straight for the unity that's going to get you those and there you go terrence points it out that is uh what is it nine credits so six yep. in, in max that's just like such an absurd amount of money to get all at once it feels so great whenever that fires yeah it sure does uh the big you know it's it's one more credit than the daily cast gets you and then so it's the question of well you don't get the drip feed of money and if yeah. you can't reliably fire it off like can, can you, you know, does it work out for you? I think in Arasana, at least, you're, off, you know, you're installing at least a card a turn. Uh, so it often pays out a little bit faster than something like Daily Cast. So I'm a big fan of it. It's interesting to see it here in Lat, a deck I tend to think of as being a little slower and having a little less mm -hmm. density of installs. But hey, we see Another a audacity. second audacity. Yeah, that's a big yeah. deal for you as the Shaper player. Um, you have Simul Chip. You've got probably unexpendable program in the board on Pichus, in terms of Pichasau if you really need it, uh, but. Yo, big thing there too, we shuffled the SMC. So if Rob wants to get that hush, it's no longer in the top of the deck. And a good thing with, you know, if you have excess money with that prognostic, you always pay a credit to show your opponent what the top of the deck is. And if you want to install it, you can install it. I'd imagine at this point in the deck, there's not too many things you're stoked to install. I feel like we have most of the engine pieces, maybe I'm not actually sure. Oh, sorry, we have seven MU, not even six. We're actually really comfortable. 
Yeah, we're very comfortable here. The the lily pad and DCMZ is is nice. It's I like I has I really hesitate to put more MU in, but it might be the correct thing to do for these matchups. Let's say we top deck the hush anyway. I think I'm pretty sure it was shuffled. He shuffled, right? Yeah, yeah, he must yeah. have. Yeah. Wow. I feel, Maybe he's on two again. Okay. That card's yeah. pretty good, but sometimes it'll be the same card. Rashida. Yeah. Draw Rashida, three, game three. I, man, Terrence is is really hurting for agendas here, which is kind of crazy considering this deck is probably running 12 agendas or something like that, if I'm remembering my agenda yeah. count correctly. Um so for what it's worth, the money hasn't felt amazing. Like I think a big part is we haven't seen Extract. Extract is a six credit econ card. That is it's a wild card. It looks yeah. like Spin Doctor is going to shuffle some stuff back in. We know there's one Audacity in the bin. It looks like it might be Rashida and the face down. That face down has been there for a long time. That was actually Audacity and was in the bin while there wasn't a Spin Doctor on the table. So if that was like that, I don't know if there's an ugly global food initiative in the list. No, wait, no, that's not even standard anymore. Excuse me. Like <laughs> some two pointer, some three pointer. Oh, that I would just love been in to. There. I would love to play a global food initiative in this list. But <laughs> <laughs> all right. So it's yeah. it's. Click one, install a spin doctor, draw two more cards. I can see an Azef on the just barely on the corner of the hand. Uh, but we're gonna install and advance an Oak Town, which I like a lot. Um, this Oak Town is genuinely one of the economic backbones of the deck. Uh, you're a little yeah. bit sad to see it now when the runner just, you know, if you had seen this two turns ago, you'd be it would like I think you're walking away with a close to an easy W here as Terrence. Uh, but now that the Shaper is on 15 credits, uh, all three breakers and the Turbine out, uh, you're going to be pouring blood, sweat, and tears to try and get another agenda through. So I think the big thing is here is understanding what does Rob think the upgrade is? I think Manic Arm is what you most expect. Looks like it is a hush just from hand. I don't think that was prognostic. So that's going to be first click, draw a card, install for free, get that engine. And it looks like here... Wait, was that a DZ hush? Oh, sorry, a uh, prognostic hush? It looks like it looks like it might have been a blind prognostic. Oh uh, no, maybe that was just an instant. No, I he drew it, right? Just been. Yeah, that was his draw okay. from the the lat draw last turn because we commented on it not being shuffled. So it was just a click one, hush, click two, run R and D. No res on the R and D so ice. Spend one to break a blade barrier. Get the click back, and then two credits to break the drafter yeah right so now we're spun up again drafter at a massive five strength if i'm not mistaken so you're not even sweating it too bad if you run into a seven strength uh stavka to sink off the top of the deck i think this is a deep dive setup for sure but it has the f off the top i mean the, i was gonna yeah, so now you just go for the deep dive now because yeah. you can't get stopped and you'll just take a home like there's not a world where you miss on eight here um i was gonna say like it, spending that one click on the hush means that you can't do the double deep dive. You just don't have the clicks unless you want to move around. And you could at instant speed, mind you, move around the Peach Chant with the simul chips. But Spin Doctor there, one on table, not a huge incentive to trash, especially if you think you're going to win on this turn. So we're yeah. turning that to hand. So I think he's going for it. Again, you don't often see that where the Peach Chant gets moved around from run to run. So you can run two servers and get the Peach Chant off mid deep dive. Like that's really aggressive lines. He just doesn't have to do that because he found the Oz yet. Yeah, so the now Spin Doctor going to be popped. Now we're just going to Oh, we're not I so to me okay, we are popping the Spin Doctor, probably just going to try and put some non-agendas into R&D. Um, yeah. cuz there shouldn't be any sure. in HQ, but putting if you have non-agenda face downs, so that's going to be better. Uh, so it looks like there's an extract, extract out. and a second a second of virus as well. So the perch not doing anything on the board state, but I think Terrence sees what's happening here. Again, both these players from the same meta, they might have practiced against each other. They might know these decks. He did, you know, respect icing up R&D pretty heavily. But here, we did run, run, install, run, 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 got a click back. Using the Atlas token, again, just pulling an agenda. Now, if you pull this to hand, you can still just run HQ. It'll be a one in five. I think you still just go for the deep dive, but good respect here just to get one agenda out of the deck. So there's one less target to hit on the deep dive. Now you need yeah. to find a real two pointer. There's probably still a hostels in the deck, but you can grab like an above the law or not. Yeah, there you go. Above the law back in hand here. <laughs> yeah, so perfect. even if you survive the deep dive here, it's still pretty awkward with an agenda, at the table and agenda in hand, as much as you <laughs> might not see HQ multi access. Yeah. And there comes the deep dive. This is last click. And we, sh we should, this will almost certainly be the game here. Um, Look at eight. You can access one of them. It looks it. like there is an Oak Town there. 
yeah. find it, finding it perfect up to seven points. And that's there, actually okay, the second a, agenda there. Yep. And there was also a spicy ganked in there. So this is, a, you know, got quite Whoa. a couple of variations on mine. But uh, but I can see why you would do it, right? Ganked Stavka is still going to be annoying for everything. That's oh, yeah. really cool. Yeah, I didn't know this ganked in there. This is, again, I think both these lists are super, super fun. Some of my favorite lists at the event. Really well played to Rob, right? Like that is a fascinating list. A lot of things to do. A lot of, you know, you have to think a couple turns in the future to build that Arasana sort of engine where you're getting that big run payoff as much as it's not, you know, Cuban and all of that. And on the other side, you got some tricky Whalen stuff rushing out. I think Terrence just didn't have the agendas exactly when he needed them. It was a couple turns where I think he had a window. Yeah, there was like one turn maybe where I'm like, oh, if he, maybe he could pop a spin doctor to try and dig a little bit deeper uh, just to try and find an agenda rather than installing a Rashida uh, for a second or third time. But OK, so this oh, is a remote whoa, server. Archer. <laughs> yeah, Archer. Mind you, the remote server was just a two kata as well. And the Stavka yeah. was on R&D and he actually hushed the Stavka on R&D on the run. So that's the border control yeah. respect classically, but that's a nice way to stop it from being that seven strength. And yeah, uh, I, you can't go get that that half run combo if you have it. I, and I think they're talking there about like, oh, if I had put this, you know, I think that it was intended as Stavka hush, like hushing the Stavka preemptively because you can't hush yep. Stavka after the fact. You have to do it preemptively. But it's like, oh, if that had been an archer. Uh, then you just get a four cost archer for without having to forfeit an agenda, which is a huge. Yeah, that's uh, such a goofy benefit. interaction. You see that sometimes in the outfit when people just preemptively hush everything. But hey, yeah. well played to both players. This is round six. We'll be back. We got 10 rounds of Swiss. So uh, this is coming to the end of day one. We have two more rounds today. A uh, huge shout out, Jeff, for joining me on this adventure. Uh, do you want to shout out your channel? I'm a big fan. Yeah, uh, you can find me on ZenGrenessC at YouTube.com. I'm putting out sporadic YouTube comment, uh, content. I think by the time this uploads, I should have a video about getting into standard. If not, it should be out within a day or two of this video coming out. Um, and then hopefully soon after that, pre-Worlds, I'll do a breakdown of some of the major decks and cards we saw across the meta. And uh, thanks again, Andre, for having me on. Cheers. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. And again, stay tuned. We'll be back for some more Can Dance. Cheers. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Uh, those are two of my favorite decks of the event. That sort of like Arasana lat midpoint is really interesting as much as that lat mini game gives you some really nice stuff to focus on. And shout out to Terrence too, who did a lot to make that hand size matching game pretty ugly. There's some really cool tricks Corpse can do as much as Audacity aggressively can get you there. I'm really interested to see again where like the Arasana lat midpoint reaches. We're seeing lily pad lats and we're seeing Arasanas on things like Pantograph. And uh, maybe it might not be too obvious what the best option is. And we're going to maybe see that at Worlds, what comes out on top. Again, huge shout outs to uh, firstly Jeff for joining me. Really appreciated that. Link in the description for his channel, his stuff. I'm a big fan. But of course, also to all these names and more that are scrolling past my face. These are just some of the folks that help support the channel. Again, we are on Patreon and these videos take a lot of time to put together. It just simply wouldn't be happening like this without the support from the community. If you want to get involved, you can find the link also in the description and huge shout out to all the Daily Cast patrons as well. On that note, we're going to be trying to kick up to more than two videos a week, maybe three videos a week going forward. Worlds is just about a week and a half away. We're trying to get everything done. So it's up on the channel while we're off in Barcelona. And if you are in Barcelona, please come say hi. That's it. Enjoy the videos and we'll see you in a bit. Ciao.